God's last messenger and the conveyor of divine knowledge, Muhammad, had companions who benefited from his knowledge. Ali was foremost among them. Ali is the only person who was miraculously born inside the Kaaba. His father was Abu Talib, uncle of God's last messenger, and the one who was Muhammad's ward since he was eight years of age. After Muhammad started his mission, Abu Talib was his best supporter in his struggle against the Quraysh pagans. To the end of his life, Abu Talib committed himself to Muhammad's mission. Ali was under Muhammad's custody, and the Prophet himself nurtured, cultivated, and raised him. Ali was the first man to accept the Prophet's invitation to enter into Islam. At the start of the mission, in the first public meeting for inviting Mecca's grandee, the Prophet said about Ali, O oh, relatives of mine, know that Ali is my brother, executor of my will, and my successor among you. On the eve of emigrating to Medina, the Prophet appointed Ali as his trustee in Mecca placing him in charge of returning things people had given the Prophet in trust. The night when 40 armed men wanted to kill the Prophet, Ali lay in the bed of the Prophet in his stead, thereby saving the Prophet's life. During the Battle of Uhud, Ali manifested such a degree of selfless sacrifice, laying his own life repeatedly on the line in order to save the Prophet's life, that Gabriel said, this is the pick of sacrifice he is showing. And the Prophet replied, He is a part of me, and I am a part of him. After nine of the enemy's flag bearers were killed by Ali, a revelation from heaven proclaimed that there is no knight whose gallantry is a match to that of Ali's, and there is no sword to match Ali's Zulfaqar. During the Battle of the Trench, Ali defeated the pagan Arab's greatest commander, hence saving Islam from certain ruin. Concerning this feat, the Prophet said, Ali's strike on the day of the Battle of the Trench, or Khandaq, was more precious than the worth of the entirety of the worship and devotional acts of all creatures. During the Battle of Khaybar, when Muslims faced insurmountable obstacles in capturing the enemy's most well-defended fortress, and the army commanders returned in despair to the Prophet, he said, Tomorrow I will give the flag to the one who never flees the battlefield nor turns his back on any enemy. He is the one who is the beloved of God and his prophet, and God will capture the fortress by the way of the agency of his hands. The next day the prophet gave Ali the flag, and in a miraculous feat, Ali conquered the castle of Faybad. In all the 27 battles where the prophet was personally the commander, Tabuk was the only battle where Ali was absent, and this was because the Prophet had appointed Ali as his substitute in Medina for the duration of the battle. Although Ali preferred to accompany the Prophet, God's messenger said, Are you not content with your rank relative to me being that of the rank of Aaron to Moses, except that there will be no Prophet after me? After the migration, or Hijra, the Prophet made brothers of each immigrant helper pair. Eventually, Ali was left alone, without the Prophet having appointed him a brother. When Ali asked why, the Prophet said, You are my brother in this world and in the hereafter. I swear to the one God who commissioned me to convey the message of the truth that I delayed your pairing in order to pair you as my own brother, a fraternity which shall span the times of both this world and the hereafter. The Prophet permitted for the marriage of his daughter, Lady Fatima, to Ali. We know from the words of the Prophet which have reached us that this pairing by way of marriage was done at God's behest of command. The Prophet took Ali and his daughter Fatima as well as his grandsons Hassan and Hussein to the Mubahala or cursing ritual of mutual imprecation with the leaders of Christians of Najran. This event was an affirmation of the limitation of the membership of the household of the Prophet to these five individuals. The only house the Prophet permitted to have a door opening onto his mosque was Ali's. The Prophet, in response to objection by some of the companions to the favor thus bestowed on Ali, said, 
God has ordered me to close all doors opening to the mosque except that of Ali's house. Never did I order a door to be closed or to remain open on my own volition. Rather, I follow God's will in all matters. Ali was among the redactors and memorizers of the revelations. Moreover, he was the Prophet's special and trusted secretary and scribe. The Prophet sent Abu Bakr to convey the Surah al barah or the execration to the idolaters of Mecca, but shortly afterwards decided to send Ali instead, instructing him to take the scroll from Abu Bakr and recite it to the Meccans. When Ali caught up with Abu Bakr and the latter returned to Medina, he despondently asked the Prophet whether there had been an ayah or revelation revealed with respect to him. The Prophet said, No, but I have been told to convey the message of this surah to the idolaters of Mecca, either myself personally or by one who is a part of me. Upon returning from his last pilgrimage, the Prophet stopped at Qadir Khom among a huge crowd of Muslims and announced Ali as his successor, saying, Whomsoever I have hitherto been Lord and Master or Mullah, so too this here Ali shall henceforth similarly be his Lord and Master. All the companions then shook hands with Ali in allegiance and congratulated him in his appointment. Eventually, on the 19th of Ramadan, Ali was martyred by the blow of a poisoned sword while he was at prayer in the prayer niche of the Kufa Mosque. Two nights later, on the eve of the 21st of Ramadan, he ascended to God's heaven. The Prophet of God said, I am the city of knowledge and Ali is its gate. Anyone who desires to enter the city must enter through its gate.